The game versus Wisconsin on Wednesday night was setting up to be a pivotal matchup for both teams. The Hoosiers were looking to stay tied with Purdue atop the conference ranks, as well as avenge a 62-49 drubbing the Badgers gave them in the team's first meeting. But this game would make the headlines for all the wrong reasons, as earlier that day, IU announced the five major violations facing head coach Calvin Sampson. So how would the team respond to controversy in a much-needed Big Ten game? Despite the distractions of the day, Coach Sampson said the game of basketball is all about breaks. But the Hoosiers didn't get a break in this one in their 68-66 loss against Wisconsin. You know, sometimes uh, basketball is a game of breaks. Wisconsin had a, um, I think it was Landry and Butch on the perimeter, um, some kind of handoff. The ball was bobbled. Butch picked it up, and when it left his hand, I said, well, that's... That's going to hit high off the glass. Um, hit the glass just right. You know, sometimes it's look better to be uh, luckier than good. That's a, it's a great break for Wisconsin, tough break for us. The Hoosiers feel comfortable with the ball in the hands of DJ White. Although he did not double double tonight, he definitely felt the shots were there. They just weren't going in. I mean, my shots were there. I mean, basically the same shots I took in the first half, I just missed them. Um, I mean, I just missed them. That's basically what I can say. At least the, the shots that I took, I think they were good shots, just didn't fall. For a team that went undefeated last season at home, the Hoosiers have lost two of their last three games at Branch McCracken Court. From Assembly Hall, I'm Alexis Hosier, Hoosier Sports Night. As a team, the Hoosiers statistically dominated Wisconsin in all areas except one, three-point shooting. Indiana had a better field goal percentage, 12 more free throws made, and had more steals and less turnovers than the Badgers. However, Wisconsin shot 11 of 26 from beyond the arc, compared to IU's 3 of 13. Individually, Eric Gordon and DJ White continued to lead IU with 23 and 17 points respectively. White also pulled down eight rebounds and blocked three shots. Jason Bohannon led Wisconsin with 18 points, all on threes. Michael Flowers added 15 points and seven boards, and a big win for the Badgers. Wednesday was a day of distractions for the Indiana University basketball program. On top of the recent departure of senior A.J. Ratliff and a loss to Wisconsin at home, the NCAA released allegations that IU coach Kelvin Sampson knowingly violated sanctions given to him because of previous recruiting trouble while he was the Oklahoma head coach. The allegations that I knowingly acted contrary to the sanctions imposed on me for violations that occurred, that occurred while I was at Oklahoma are not true. I have never intentionally provided false or misleading information to the NCAA. Nothing outside is affected the team. You know, we're a family. Uh, we stick together through whatever. Uh, you know, tonight has nothing to do with anything. We just, we just didn't win. Senior DJ White insists that this will not distract the team and that Thursday will be business as usual. But while IU continues to investigate the situation, the Hoosiers have their two biggest games of the season coming up. Reporting from Assembly Hall, I'm Brett Goldenhorn, Hoosier Sports Night. The Big Ten has become a three-team race with Purdue, Wisconsin, and Indiana separated by only one and a half games at the top. After IU handed Michigan State their fourth loss in conference play, the Spartans end up on the outside looking in at the Big Ten regular season race. And everyone's still trying to catch a Purdue team that was supposed to be a few years away from contention. And all you Northwestern fans out there, do not be discouraged. There are still seven chances for you to get your first win in the conference. In Indiana Purdue basketball history, there may not be a moment where the two teams are more closely ranked than they are now. As the Hoosiers prepare to face the Boilers on Tuesday, the two teams are ranked 14 and 15 respectively, and separated by a mere 76 votes. Purdue sits a game and a half ahead of IU in the conference standings. However, their 21 and 5 record overall puts them a half game behind the Hoosiers in that category. Although Indiana has won five of the last six meetings between the schools, Purdue won the last matchup in West Lafayette by 13 points. And right now, no team is hotter than the Boilermakers, who come into the game riding an 11-game win streak. On the women's side, the Lady Hoosiers are finding themselves in Big Ten contention with only a few games remaining in the season. Ben Heisler was at Assembly Hall after the Hoosiers were beaten by Michigan State. Here's the report. In a Thursday night matchup that featured two of the top post players in the Big Ten, Indiana and Michigan State went down to the wire with the Spartans coming up on top 72 to 68. The Hoosiers shot nearly 48% from three-point range and had four players in double figures, but the Spartans finished with 16 offensive rebounds, the key difference in their victory. 
Well, we understand uh, DeHaan uh, getting her 15 rebounds, but what we don't understand is, you know, uh, their number, their point guard, Brittany Thomas, coming down with eight rebounds. I, I thought that we could have did a better job of getting those guards off the boards, and uh, we'll, we'll get better with that. With still a long road ahead, Coach Legat Jack is confident her players will respond in a tough and physical Big Ten conference. This Big Ten is for real, you know, and I'm hoping that the uh, uh, the country understand that. But we played hard, and we played uh, a tough team. And tonight, uh, they, they have a few more points than us, but we'll get better. We'll get better. So it was a disappointing loss tonight for the Indiana Hoosiers to Michigan State, but they do have an opportunity to move back into the top tier of the Big Ten when they take on the Wolverines of Michigan. And it is Think Pink Day at Assembly Hall, so the Lady Hoosiers will be excited to wear shoelaces, headbands, and everything pink to promote awareness for breast cancer research. At Assembly Hall, I'm Ben Heisler, Hoosier Sports Night. After losing at Illinois and versus Michigan State, it's going to take a strong finish for the Hoosiers to capture a conference title. Sunday, they took on the Wolverines of Michigan, and although it was Think Pink Day at Assembly Hall, Indiana was thinking big win. And out to the historic venue we go. The ladies getting ready to take on Michigan. Both of these teams preparing for postseason play. Early going, Whitney Lindsay hits the layup inside. She would finish the night with six points for the Lady Hoosiers. Michigan with some fight early. The long three from Carly Benson here ties the game at 11 points. Benson would finish with 13 points. Now a long three on the other side of the court for Jamie Brown. She would have 22 points to lead all scorers in the game. Halfway to go in this first half, and inside Whitney Thomas hits the turnaround shot. That caps a 13-2 Hoosier run. And just a few minutes later, again Thomas putting the Hoosiers up 31-21. Indiana would lead by 10 points at the half, and Thomas would finish with 19 points and 10 rebounds in the game. But Michigan had some fight early in the second half. Big Krista Phillips at 6-6 hits the turnaround jumper to make it a 7-point game. But Jamie Brown, the long three, pulling up and fading away to hit it. Her second and final three of the afternoon puts Indiana back up by 10. And this one puts the game away. The senior Nikki Smith from the corner. Indiana up 66 to 49 at that point. They would move past Michigan 74 to 65 to improve to 15 and 11 on the season. The Hoosiers were in action on Sunday on the National Girls and Women in Sports Day to try and get a win against Big Ten Conference opponent, the Michigan Wolverines. IU came into Sunday's game with a mentality of being aggressive, and, that, and they did just that. Coach Jack was pleased with the way her team played and attacked the basket. We went back to who we were, and that's attack the basket. And once we attack the basket, great things happen. I don't know when the last time we shot 24 uh, free throws uh, in a game. And I still think that we can go for 30 if we really attack the basket a little bit more uh, aggressively. It's, I like to attack the basket, you know, and, you know, I was a little hesitant at first, but I think that's what, you know, we need to do against this team is attack it. And, you know, I got to the line a couple times, and, and then I opened it up for, you know, my shooters on the team. So. The Hoosiers will travel to Wisconsin on Wednesday to try to tally up another conference win against the Badgers. Reporting for Hoosier Sports Night, I'm Rochelle Stearns. Sunday's basketball game was not just a basketball game. It was a day to help fight a disease that affects so many women today. It's very important that they understand, you know, it's not a boy sport. It's a sport. It's a health issue. You know, you get out there and you run and play, and it's a healthy thing to do. And you don't have to be a boy to, to play sports. And I, it's a neat that they're getting out there and being they're seeing us play, but also getting ideas that they can be inspired to be anything they want to be. These are phenomenal girls right now. One day they're going to be phenomenal women. It's really positive for them. Um, they get a chance to see some really strong women doing a bunch of um, really cool things, you know, participating in sports with different club sports and different activities um, that they've got going on. For one afternoon, wins and losses were not the most important thing at Assembly Hall. For Hoosier Sports Night, I'm Kirsten Ellison. Coming up next on Hoosier Sports Night, we've got the ultimate highlight reel, the 2007 Indiana football season. Certainly something you do not want to miss. And I had a chance to sit down with IU kicker Austin Starr last week. We discussed Coach Hep's arrival and then the coach's passing and the 2007 season. Stay tuned to IUSTV for more Hoosier Sports Night.